Hello, everyone. This is Adam Tabero with Psychedelic Insights. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. In today's episode, me and Doug Drysdale will be going over the Phase 1, 2A data the Cy- that Cybin recently released uh, for CYB003. Uh, we'll cover a bunch of other things in the interview as well, but that's the main talking point for the interview. I hope you guys are as excited as I am, and let's get to it. Hello, hello, everyone. This is Adam Zbero with Psychedelic Insights, and today I am joined with the CEO of Cybin, Doug Drysdale. Hey, Adam. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Doug. Uh, So I wanted to bring you on the show to talk to you about uh, everything going on with the company. Just give us some updates. Uh, A lot of exciting developments with Cybin currently. Um, So let's get things going. Uh, in the press release, Sybin states that the results are unprecedented. Can you elaborate on what makes these results unprecedented? Sure. So uh, if you look at the current standard of care in treating depression, so SSRIs, uh, and you take a meta-analysis of 232 randomized clinical trials that have been run uh, uh, on SSRIs in depression uh, since 1979, so really looking back over the last 40 years, the uh, the mean change from baseline, so the mean improvement in depression scores from SSRIs compared to placebo is just around two points, actually less than two points. Uh, obviously, we've seen other more modern antidepressants uh, have some pivotal studies that have delivered changes of five, six, seven points, all very good and impressive. Uh, but in that context, we think that 14, a 14-point 14 improvement in depression symptoms is pretty remarkable so uh it's a it's a great starting point for us going into into a phase three plan uh, with that kind of uh, amazing result we think yeah it's extremely exciting i agree uh to follow that up on the dales report we heard you say that you have the two best assets in the entire sector can you give a bit more detail as to why i believe cybin's two lead programs are the best assets in the sector you know we've started fr- from the very beginning <clears throat> we weren't satisfied with the native compounds, we wanted to see if we could optimize them. And so we've done that. We've modified these uh, these two uh, lead programs, uh, optimized pharmacokinetics. Uh, we'd, we've made them more potent. The deuteration is definitely making them more potent. We're seeing, um, we're seeing effects at lower doses than we would have anticipated. Uh, they're short acting, so they're very scalable, uh, protected by a very large IP portfolio. Uh, so I think they're very well differentiated. Um, specifically, you know, CYB3 um, has effects that begin within 15 minutes. It has a therapeutic window that appears to be about two hours. The peak effects last about two hours. Uh, it's an oral capsule, so it's easy to, to take. You don't need to, an IV infusion pump. Um, similarly with CYB4, our deuterated DMT asset, it's actually very, very similar. Uh, a 40-minute experience from just a single injection. Um, and we're fairly confident we can get these one of these into a small volume injectable, so subcutaneous or intramuscular, so easy to dose, and uh, no need for an IV infusion pump or a special clinic or anything like that. So that's kind of how we look at it. We've always looked from the beginning at how could we improve the patient experience, uh, how we, how could we contribute to making um, uh, making these more scalable uh, and make them more attractive for payers as well. So that's why I think they're they're very well differentiated these assets. Uh, thanks for the well thought out response. In regards to scalability and whatnot, um, what type of setting do you see, kind of like even CYB003 being plugged into uh, in regards to like a clinical setting? Yeah, so the the treatment rooms that we're using in our in our studies um, are very comfortable and relaxed rooms. It's sofas, uh, lots of cushions, blankets. They're they're they're, they're soft and friendly and, and welcoming. Um, I think the only special need in there is that there's a, there's a bathroom uh, available given, you know, this, it's a few hours. Um, but other than that, there's no need for any special clinical equipment or any uh, special clinical settings. I think these could be dosed in a, in a whole range of uh, locations from existing ketamine and spravado clinics to maybe TMS centers uh, to a therapist's office. So I think that we could be pretty flexible. Yeah, that's, that's huge actually. Um, so there was dis- there was discussion of the effects lasting up to four hours. Can you elaborate on that and whether it's in line with expectations? Yeah, it's just similar to what we saw preclinically. Um, we haven't actually measured the the total duration. Is not one of the things that we were doing, but anecdotally from the from the investigators, they're telling us in that range four to four and a half hours, something like that, and that's about what we saw 
uh, preclinically as well. Uh, we saw a PK curve. That's about half of what you'd see with with, with psilocybin. The, the half life of of CYB3 is significantly shorter. Yeah. Got you. And you, you were saying it also has a 15 minute onset, correct? Yeah, so quite rapid. So that's I think that's really important. Um, it means that the patient isn't waiting around wondering if something's going to happen. I mean, if as an hour goes by and nothing's happening, you can imagine that some patients think it didn't work or they think that, well, they're getting anxious or maybe they have uh, some um, some regrets, you know, and then, then there's no going back. Uh, so I think having a fast onset is quite useful and quite, 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 quite valuable. Agreed. Um, how did you achieve such a good placebo response compared to the other companies? I think the placebo um, response, the the peak effects, uh, we saw a, a, an eight point change compared to placebo at the peak effects. Uh, that's quite similar to Comp360, actually. Maybe slightly different time frames that we may have measured differently in the, in the studies, but very similar. In, in fact, I, I'm I'm really happy with the placebo response. You know, we saw a very rapid placebo response, which is great. It shows you that your control is working. Uh, it, we saw a peak at eight points, uh, eight point reduction. That's very meaningful when you consider your SSRIs have that two point benefit. So it's really, really making a difference. Uh, and then, of course, it fades away back to baseline um, as you get closer to three weeks, which is what you'd expect from an acute treatment rather than, rather than a, a chronic one. Uh, so we're quite happy. We think the placebo response is, is pretty robust. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, so what are your thoughts on the re remission rate versus Compass? You know, it's it's hard uh, to do head to head comparisons, cross study comparisons. You know, different populations, obviously, in these different molecules. Um, I think you know a, a twenty percent remission or a thirty percent remission, both are very impressive after a single dose. I mean, I think that's sometimes something that is missed here is that every most treatments today for depression are chronic daily dosing, and we're talking about people being in complete remission after a single dose, which is quite remarkable. Um, I'm really excited to see the two dose data that we'll get uh, around year end. Um, it's always been our theory that two doses were going to improve response rates and remission rates. And these are already good. I think we had a 53% response rate. It's pretty remarkable. Um, but if we can improve on those with a second dose, then, then why not? You know, our viewers, be, be, we've looked at this from many different angles. So the molecule itself, optimizing through deuteration, pushing the dose up as high as we can. We were seeing psychedelic effects at eight milligrams and we pushed it all the way up to 16. So we've doubled the dose. Uh, and then of course the dose regimen, the two, the two doses. If we can get more people across the line, improve response rates, improve remission rates, and then have that those effects be durable with that second dose, then I think that that, that that makes total sense. So is it safe to say the best is yet to come in regards to the, the data that's coming now? I'm knocking on wood here. I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way. Um, yeah. So uh, what's the new post-acquisition cash runway? So we, uh, we're we about to report financials this week. So uh, you'll have that data this week. It's, it's been a very busy financing quarter, though, um, and a bit more complex than a normal quarter because of the small farmer acquisition and some other things. So we reported in June uh, around $18 million on a balance sheet. Small farmer, their quarter was ended in May. They had $13 million on a balance sheet. We've had an, an investment from Point72, Steve Cohen's fund, that came in on the ATM, so it was cashed directly into the company. Uh, we've had some others come in that way uh, as, as well. Uh, we just announced a raise on uh, on Friday that mm -hmm. will close this week. Um, so you've got all of those ads. You've got some burn, obviously, and some transaction costs. So, yeah, I think we're in a very healthy position, uh, and you'll see the numbers this week, I think, as they get published. All right, awesome. Um, what is the ball... What is the ballpark estimate for funding your upcoming phase three trial for CYB003? You know, one of the benefits of having such a large effect size, uh, you know, big separation between active and placebo uh, is that it makes the studies less risky and more efficient. So smaller, essentially. So we believe that uh, this phase three study will need about 220 patients. Uh, randomized one to one active to placebo and that's about an 18 month study 18 to 24 months depends on you know, what uh, rate of recruitment that you use and your assumptions uh, but that's about a 30 million dollar study so that's quite when you when you compare that to many other studies um, that's pretty efficient because of this massive effect size that we're seeing i got you i got you i agree there um 
also just a, a question uh, I had uh, in regards to the the trial size for the phase two, uh, was that more so just to get into the phase three, just like we want to just get everything done as efficiently as possible and kind of like taking costs into account as well? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we always knew, and of course, based now on FDA draft guidelines, that we'd need two phase three studies, two pivotal studies uh, as Compass is running. Uh, we didn't see the point in running a very large 200 patient phase two study just to get proof of concept and then still have to run two phase three studies. So we think that the study design that we put together, which had good dose escalation, good dose ranging, uh, looks at data, uh, one dose versus two doses, and we'll have readouts at three weeks, six weeks and 12 weeks. Uh, that's that's a lot of information. And obviously we'll, we're looking at safety as well. But look, we know now that uh, CYB3 is safe. We know that it's highly effective. Uh, and that's all the answers that you need going into, into phase three. So really didn't see the point in spending two plus years and you know, many, many, many times more dollars uh, to, uh, to run a, uh, a large phase two study when we would still need two phase three studies anyway. Yeah, I hear that. Um, so previously you have talked about getting breakthrough therapy designation for CYB003. Is there any clarity you could provide regarding this right now? Yeah, look, I mean, this the, with this data, I'm even more excited about that potential. Um, I don't know, the criteria for breakthrough ther uh, therapy designation is, uh, one, the indication has to be life-threatening. FDA has granted BTD in MDD before, so we know that that meets that criteria. Uh, we have to deliver preliminary clinical data, which we have. Uh, and it has to be better than other treatments that are on the market. But well, clearly, as we said at the beginning, these results are quite remarkable, unprecedented. And of course, it has to be safe. So I, I, in our view, we meet all the criteria. Um, we'll have all the data from the study collated and into FDA by year end. And then it's, it's in their hands. They can do the review. Oh, that's exciting. Um, so any comments on the status on the AUD indication? Would you be able to start with a phase two and proceed directly to a phase three as here? You know, uh, obviously, we're excited about all the other indications uh, that are out there. And that's one of the really remarkable things about these molecules is that they seem to work in so many different areas. So AUD, obviously, we've said clearly that we'd be interested in, uh, but also potentially in the future, postpartum depression, uh, eating disorders, maybe even PTSD. Uh, you know, there's so, so many other uh, options out there. Um, but, and the opportunities are massive. Uh, you know, the, the depression and anxiety market's probably a $40 billion opportunity. Uh, you add those other uh, treatments, those other indications in, it's potentially a $100 billion opportunity. So lots of, lots of, uh, lots of opportunity, but we have to be focused, right? We're still a small company. Um, we have limited resources <clears throat> and, and, the most important thing is getting to market uh, as efficiently and uh, as, as we can. And so uh, we'll build in some other indications at the right time, whether that's a small proof of concept study or whether it's a full um, uh, pivotal study, we, we'll decide as time goes by. Right now, we're very laser focused on getting to phase three with CYB3 and getting to phase two with our DRA DMT program. I got you. I got you. And the, is the goal for Cybin to push these drugs actually through to commercialization as opposed to, let's say, like some of these other biotech companies selling out to big pharma beforehand? Look, my plan, my, my view has always been that uh, if you have a plan B, you get distracted from plan A. Uh, and uh, so plan A is let's go all the way uh, ourselves, particularly in North America. Yeah, I, I've built sales forces in CNS uh, in, in the US and launch products. So have that experience and so do members of our, of our team. So our plan is to take it all the way ourselves. Uh, less likely in Europe, where there are 26, 27 different markets with different regulatory environments. They're a, a, you know, a, a well-established marketing uh, pharma company would be a great partner. So that's something that we'd be open to. And frankly, we'd be open to that in the US as well, uh, if the terms and the conditions and the partner were right. But like I said, I mean, if that happens, great. Uh, but we're planning on, on going all the way ourselves. Understood. Understood. Uh, do you foresee Cybin adding any new indications for 003? What might the first ones be and what would be the strategic timing for doing so? 
Yeah, look, I think the first focus here is is getting through two phase three studies. So getting the first one up and running, which uh, is obviously a, a large task. We're talking maybe 10 to 15 sites in the US, maybe 10 sites in, in, in Europe. Uh, that involves all kinds of cross um, cross country and cross territory training and translation and all of that stuff. Um, and then uh, at some point during as, uh, during that study, starting another one. So I mean, our focus is, is on that right now. Uh, we'll decide in due course at what point we start on other indications. Um, and that'll largely depend upon market conditions, access to capital, uh, et cetera. But like, I, I think that's getting to market fastest and for the least cost is the most important thing. These other indications will all be there you know, when, uh, when the time is right. Understood, understood. And this is the, the last question is how much cash, what's the ballpark in regards to cash you're looking to raise next? Well, we just uh, we just did a raise uh, that we announced on on Friday, um, and uh, that uh, fully executes. Then uh, we'll have cash well into twenty twenty six. But you know, it all will, will always depend upon market conditions and terms available. Uh, but we've always been able to raise capital, and I'm confident we'll continue to be able to do so. Agreed, agreed. With the data that you guys have coming out, I, I can't see that being a huge hurdle for you guys. Um, so anyway, that's, that's the interview with Doug Drysdale. I wanted to thank Doug. Uh, if you have any closing statements for the community, please feel free. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Look, I think this is still an exciting time. This, uh, this data we just released is, is really impressive, but it's just interim data. And, uh, we do still have the full top line readout to come, uh, at year end, which I'm very excited about. And look, I, I really want to see the two dose data and what a difference uh, that makes. Um, and then as we get into the first quarter of the next year, we'll have phase one readouts from our two deuterated DMT programs, uh, starting a phase two study, you know, deuterated DMT, and end of phase two meeting for CYB3, uh, and, and then starting to recruit patients into a phase, a phase three study by the end of the first quarter. So this is just the beginning of a whole series of catalysts that are coming in the next sort of four or five months. Very exciting. And uh, I can't wait to have you back on the show to continue talking about this stuff. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, and thank you for everyone for watching. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. If you guys enjoyed that interview, please like and subscribe. It helps out the channel tremendously. Uh, next interview will be with Christian Engermeyer, the founder of Vital Life Sciences. I'm extremely excited for that one. So stay tuned.